It's always in the, they were fighting to win the Premier League, so what a game, ups and downs, highs and lows, and, and in general more than satisfied for the week we had ahead of us with the three, three games away with tough opponents and we behave as a, as a great team. We haven't lost a game and we haven't won it, so it's mixed emotions. Um, you know, I thought on another day we could have got the three points, we had the better chances, uh, you know, that's football. Should Liverpool have been down to ten, James Milner, second yellow maybe? It's yellow card. And against that team, to get that margin is so close, it's a big difference to play in that, but at the end I understand, for the referees, do it in Anfield and Old Trafford is not easy. I understand sometimes, but it was yellow card, too much, too much clear, it's not interpretation on that. What's the feeling in your dressing room? <laughs> um, I think we'll be disappointed overall. Um, because I think we can be better in the first half in terms of performance. Um, and then <clears throat> last 10 minutes, 2-1 up, I think we should see the game out, to be honest. So, disappointing, um, but still positives to take. You know, City, you're a good team. I spoke to Jordan Henderson and he said there's a bit of disappointment in the dressing room that you <laughs> hadn't won the game. Do, do you share that? Yeah, I do. It actually feels like that, but I have a brain as well. And when I think about it, then I think, mm, come on. Really, the first half was really bad. So we, we should not, and we will not ignore that. People were completely on, ready to go, and then we deliver cold chips or whatever. So and then and everyone's like, "Oh my God, that's it!" I was really happy that we had a half time. And second half was the, the game we wanted to see. Game where everybody wanted to see is the beauty of football. Both teams really go for it. Nobody gave up. But again, how I said, it's it's all fine. We got a point. I think that's now what we deserve, and that's fine. Well, over the years of doing this, we've often seen title challenges cancel each other out in, mm. in games like this, and this was the opposite. It was brilliant. Oh, this was a, it was a magnificent game. Man City uh, played some incredible stuff in the first half. Liverpool didn't turn up. City battered them, I thought. Should have been two or three, at least two or three goals up, created some very good opportunities. And we said at half-time, didn't we, that Liverpool can't be as bad as that again in the second half. And Jürgen has obviously um, worked wonders in the dressing room with what he said. Much more energy Liverpool had in the second half. I mean, and, the, and the two goals that Liverpool scored were unbelievable, particularly the more Salah one. I mean, it will, it's, it's one of the best of the Premier League era. Well, uh, Alan said Liverpool were bad in the first half. Yeah. Jurgen Klopp said they were bad in the first half. You're not going to disagree with <laughs> either of those two, are you? Definitely not. No. no. I'm going to go straight down that same line, I think, especially after Jurgen's interview as well. I'm not going to argue with him. <laughs> um, look, they, they struggled in that first half, I, I, I thought, and it was down to City's press like they did against Chelsea. But you had situations like this a lot where Mo Salah, you know, he's playing right back here, essentially, Mo Salah, up against Grealish. But it was more to do with when they did win the ball back. That's their whole team. You know, you, you throw a blanket over them all. There's no out ball here. Usually with Liverpool, you're thinking, right, counter-attack, Mane, Jota, Salah on the bike, but there was nothing to hit. So time and time again, they were getting caught out. When Matic was coming forward with the ball, can he play that ball into Diego Jota, the one to Mane? I just felt like those little five-yard balls where they had composure, well, where they usually have composure, just weren't there. Mm. So they couldn't find their rhythms. You know, the situations like this, where Matic does find the ball this time, and then it's a poor ball. It was always kind of like stop-start for Liverpool in that first half. Second half, much better. Higher up the pitch, better quality of ball. And you always felt with these three, you get them the opportunities, they will score. This goal and the two goals that Liverpool scored are kind of as pure and as, <laughs> and as high-level quality as you're going to see in any league in the world. With Mane's run here, which is brilliant about this, if he makes that run, he's offside. If he, what he does is he bends his run in front of Ruben Diaz. People talk about why Ford should bend the run. That's exactly why Ford should, should bend the run. It stays on side. Look at this little look here for Mo Salah. He knows what Cancelo wants to do. He just uses his body to get him out of the way. What happens next, you can't explain. There's no point in even doing any kind of Piero analysis on it. It's well, not from world, you. It's just world <laughs> class. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's just world class, basically. Oh. So, you know, it's essentially for Jurgen Klopp today, that game hinged for him on his superstars turning up, and Mo Salah did exactly that. And also a little bit, him giving them confidence for the second half. He also said, you know, because they had to drop their midfield in the first half to defend against mm. City, they then lacked more confidence going forward and yeah. the options weren't there, and that's what you proved. Yeah, that, that is it. Don't try and be my friend now, anyway. You just, uh, <laughs> All right, yeah. excellent. Let's move on. So, move no, on. forget it. <laughs> right, let's move, it. move on to Manchester City, who were excellent yeah. today. Yeah, and they've been excellent in the last two away games. So the, th the three that they've had the last week in, 
in terms of Chelsea, PSG and today. Some of the football that they've played was unbelievable. Certainly the best performances I've seen for a while. They should have won by more. They created chances and on Wednesday and again today. I just think when they want to go that little bit extra, we know that they wanted Harry Kane. We know that they wanted that centre forward. And, and I think certainly in the last three games, that's highlighted a lot. Today, there were several. When you get that ball there, you're looking at the options and thinking, OK, where's the nine? Where's Grealish? He was in the false nine. By the time he gets there, it's too late. Yes, City like to play the, uh, the passing game. It's successful for them. And they won't be far away again this season. But at times, I just think by the time he gets there, then it, they made it slightly easier for Liverpool than I, I think it should have been. And they should have been out of sight because just look at Foden there. He's looking for that ball. It's the right ball. His centre forward would make that run. De Bruyne doesn't. Look at Foden's reaction. He wants him. He's desperate for him to, uh, to make that run. Again, they get into uh, a great position. Now, a forward again would make the run to the near post or the far post. Foden was superb, as was Bernardo Silva, but he's not a centre forward. Same thing again. They get into that position and he's looking up, there's no one there. He's got to hold on to the ball, hold on to it, but by the time the ball comes in, Liverpool have been able to get players back and they deal with it comfortably. Second half, when, uh, when Sterling came on, he makes a superb run in behind, times it to perfection, but just look at Bernardo Silva, that exact same thing again, a forward with a killer instinct would get on the end of that and make that run in there. And I think an average player, an average centre-forward playing centre-forward for Manchester City would get at least 20 goals. A world-class forward in that team, centre-forward with a killer instinct, would get 40 goals. Is, is, is the counter-argument, and this may be a stupid question, that by having an out-and-out centre-forward who just hangs around the penalty area, that that then detracts from some of City's other play. No, would, that, would that be the argument? No, I don't, I don't think so. That's why he wanted to bring in Harry Kane. He wanted someone to fill that gap that I've just highlighted there. And if Harry had gone there, he would have, as I said, he would have got 40 goals at least. They're still going to challenge, there's no doubt about it. Mm. But I just think in those big games, and certainly in the last three games that I've watched, that's the thing that has been... If you're going to be hypercritical, that's the thing that I think that's been missing. Because uh, in fairness, just, just quickly before you move on, they, they, they won the league and got to a Champions yeah. League final last Last year without a striker, essentially. I mean, I know they had Aguero there, but he was injured for a lot, of, a lot of the season and Gabriel Jesus was in and out. But then people would say exactly what you just said. That final, that's probably where they needed that. Yep. Everything that went goal. through Phil Foden today for Manchester he's, City. He's, he's electric, the kid, you know. He's only just come back, um, you know, starting games for City. His first game that he started in the Premier League was away at Chelsea. And the impact that he has on this team is is very evident. The chances created. What I, what I, the couple of things I love about Phil Foden, and one of the biggest things, and that was the pass of the day, by the way, for Edison. He runs forward non-stop. He's asking questions of you, whether he's got the ball at his feet or whether he's running in behind you. He scores a goal. You know, he's one of the left, one like kind of like we were talking about it before, yeah. a left-sided player who likes to play on the left side. <laughs> Usually, you've got right footers on the left wing, left footers on the left wing, liking to you know to, to, to cut inside a bit like what Liverpool do, what Manchester United do with Greenwood and Sancho or Rashford. But you know, I mean, Al, you was you know, you, you, we both were lauding well, we him would, we the would game. Ju I was just sat there thinking, you know, some of the things that he's doing with that football on that left-hand side were just superb. Some of the balls he was. He was playing in. What a player he is. Yeah. Liverpool should have been down to 10 men. Would you both agree oh, with yeah. Pep Guardiola there? Yeah. Absolutely, 100%. I mean, they, on this occasion here, the ref doesn't even give a free kick when Foden's running in behind for Milner. I mean, he gave him a torrid afternoon, James that, Milner. That's unbelievable. That, that, you can see clearly from this angle, he clips him there. Yeah. So he doesn't even give a free kick. And if he did, it should have been a yellow card on that occasion. That isn't, OK. Then he gets... The, uh, the yellow card, which was absolutely correct. So already, I think, he could have gone yeah, for that one if he yeah. uh, had a given Why the not? first decision. I mean, this one is just bizarre. What the referee is thinking there, I just... I wonder, I whether, just I wonder whether the referee thinks Henderson has clipped him rather, rather than it's Milner. That, but that would be the only thing. It's the only defence you can give him. Uh, but he's still got the first one badly wrong as well. To get yeah. two so wrong... Yeah. I mean, James Milner and Liverpool definitely got away with one. And for all the attacking play, very, very quickly... What a block this is. Oh, I mean, the, the way he anticipates it, the way he reads the game, mistake by the goalkeeper, you need someone to come and bail it out, and Rodri certainly does that. Didn't wow. have his best game, by the way, but had probably the biggest moment of the game for yeah. the team by doing that. Um, you know, brilliant block. Hearts right. in mass time. Okay. 
Still talking to me for the rest of the show? Just about. <laughs> okay, just about. Good. Well, for any football fan watching that game around the world, that was an absolute treat. And I think Peter mm. Drury said it perfectly at the end of his commentary. He said, we just didn't want it to stop. <laughs> I, I have to totally agree with you there. Obviously, in the first half, City, after the first 15 minutes, City really, really pressed high against Liverpool. Liverpool seemed to be really unsettled with it and not keeping control of the ball, giving away sloppy passes, which City kind of capitalised on in their counter-attacks, but didn't have the, the end product at that time. So it was fantastic. Game. So in the end, all is said and done, it was two all. Was that a fair result for you, Glenn? Um, yeah, I think if you know both sides are honest, I think it's a, it's a fair result. Um, you know, Liverpool obviously didn't really come out of the blocks uh, at the start of the game. Why do you think that um, was? Just City, just too dominant? Or? Yeah, you know, City can do that to teams. Obviously, they've got fantastic players, and, and when they do press high and they press well as a team, then they're, you know they're super tough to play against. So. I don't. I think it's more that City were good than Liverpool, uh, you know, performing bad. So, um, but yeah. So, like I say, I think it's a, a fair result. Yeah, and I guess Jurgen Klopp said it perfectly. Then he said, "Thank goodness that football is a game of two halves." Because if anyone watched that first half, they wouldn't have been too impressed with Liverpool. But they were different in the second half. And actually, it was Mane that got the goals going. Um, yeah, it, it was definitely different. And they, they pressed high. They won the ball. And it's a great passage of play here. The way Salah dinks it over him. And if, if you watch Mane, before he runs across him, he waits for Sulla to come inside and then a one-touch finish. This is, that's a, a hard chance. He still had a lot to do, especially running at full pace to do everything so quickly in motion. And it, it's a perfect finish in the far side. Defensively, could any of the defenders have done anything? Uh, yeah, I think Cancelo's uh, going to want to do a little bit better there up, up, up on the halfway line. You know, if you get that close to Salah, you've got to foul him or do something. Um, he had absolutely no impact on it. Um, but obviously, when, when Mo gets moving like that, obviously, he's very hard to stop. <laughs> yes. um, and obviously, like Wright says, the uh, minute Mane drops that shoulder and gets a yard on you, you know, he's so quick that it's going to be hard to, to react. Uh, the defender sort of got to pre preempt the fact that he's going to come across him and try and start sprinting early yeah. rather than waiting and reacting. Well, as for Foden's goal, I don't think anybody could do anything about this. I mean, this was pure precision, wasn't it, Sean? It was more than precision, but for me, it's, it's Jesus does so much here because he's, he's trapped in a box and somehow finds his way out. But the weight on pass to um, Foden, whose touch takes him a little bit wide, but... I think that helps him, as, as me and John were speaking about, it stops Milner from being able to, to get a touch on it. But mm. the finish is so precise where he puts it. I think that is literally the only place he could have put. And it's so close to the post that that's all there was to aim for. Mm. That's literally the only place he could put it, isn't it? You know, like, like Wright says, with the, with the first touch, it's actually a bad touch. Um, but because it's bad and goes away from, uh, away from Milner, it actually gives him an extra bit of, extra bit of room. So um, I think if his touch was better, I think Milner would probably get there and maybe yeah. be able to land a blow and, and put a tackle on him. But because that touch took him away, and like I say, once he lets that strike go, it's, it's a fantastic finish. And then came, I think we could argue this was the goal of the game. Couldn't we, Sean? Mo Salah <laughs> doing what he does best. I, honestly... This reminds me of when I play FIFA. He, he basically <laughs> just rolls it with his studs, but he, he puts Laporte on the back foot straight away. And once he does that, he knows he's got him. So he just takes it back onto his right foot. And he's so over worried about him coming on his left foot that it gives him so much space on the right. And the finish on the right, again, like, like Foden's, it, that's the only place he mm. could have put it. And if you see again, it's right beside the post again. He just weaves through that defence, doesn't he? Yeah. He makes it look so easy, but he's just such an exceptional player. Exactly, yeah. and he, he's so sharp. You know, he, the ball just sticks to his feet. He's very quick, and when he's up against those big defenders, that you know, he makes them look like they can't turn. Um, but he's, he's, he's super sharp. I think the defenders will, you know, they would have liked to have done better there, but. But that's Mo, you know, when, he, when he's on fire like that, he's hard to stop. He um, is hard to stop. And you stop. see that, the angle behind the goal, it's literally millimetres and, and, he, and he misses. So it's uh, very, very uh, precise. And the numbers back up exactly what you've both said. Nine appearances in all competitions this season, nine goals. 35 shots. I mean, he must be a nightmare for any defender to come up against. Oh, it would be, yeah. And, you know, when you see him like that, like in that second half there, was enjoying his football, you know, he, he wants to get on the ball. He's, he's, people are trying to get close to him. He's physically strong. Um, you know, he can run behind players. He can get the ball to his feet. Um, there's not a lot he can't do. For me, it's one of those as well. With him, like, he can, he can be out the game for a period of mm. time. But if you give him 30 seconds of that, he, he will give you that in product all the time. And that's, mm. I think, the, the great thing about him. Mm. 
I think that Liverpool fans want the club to do everything they can to just hold him down and just yeah. get him signing a new contract because yeah. without Mo Salah, I mean, they, I mean, he, you can see what he contributes yeah. to this team. Yeah. Oh, you, yeah. You can't. You know, they, these players are hard to come by. Um, you know, and, and when you do get one in your camp. You need to do whatever you can to, to, to keep him. I'm sure, you know, we, we all know he loves Liverpool. He's, he's clearly loved at the club. So I don't think it's going to be the hardest deal in the world to, to, to get over the line. So I'm sure they'll they get it sorted soon, hopefully. So Liverpool were hoping they'd got the job done and then came Kevin De Bruyne. <laughs> it's the man. First of all, his pass is like exquisite, but it's one of those they say follow your runner. I, I thought Walker made a mistake letting it go, but when you're a player like Kevin De Bruyne, no matter how it comes, whatever foot it comes to, he seems to hit it cleanly. But I, I, I also think Allison um, has it covered, but the, the slight de deflection takes it in. And sometimes when you're playing well, you, you need that bit of luck, especially at places like Anfield, because mm. that's a very tough place to go to. Yeah. You can see exactly what it means to Pep as well there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I think they'll be, you know, the fact they've gone to Anfield and scored two goals, they'll probably be a bit upset they haven't actually come away w with a win. But, um, but look, I think they performed really well. Um, it meant a lot to them, as you, as you see there in the celebrations. And like I said, I think 2-2 is a, a good result. They're from Kevin De Bruyne talking about Anfield being a tough place to go. As an away player, was it the same for you going to Anfield? Most definitely was. I think it was one of the toughest places. And... People used to say, like, when you first play in the Champions League and that song comes on and you get the goosebumps on your, your arms. It's basically like that at Anfield at the start of every game. Once mm -hmm. they, they stand up and the noise starts, you, you really know, like, it's 12 minutes. The same for you going to Anfield? Most definitely was. I think it was one of the toughest places. And people used to say, like, when you first play in the Champions League and that song comes on and you get the goosebumps on your, your arms. It's basically like that at Anfield at the start of every game once they they stand up and the noise starts you you really know like it's 12 men versus 11 really because the fans are like an extra man yeah. and it's needed at times yeah and you know exactly what it's like i mean it's yeah. such a special place to to watch a big football match like this yeah absolutely yeah you know it's one of the most iconic stadiums in the world isn't it you know and um you know everyone says about the fans being the 12th man but at anfield they it really is. are you know it's it's obviously a, a compact stadium as well so it's like they feel you know really close to the pitch and Obviously, I was lucky enough to play most of my times there on the right side. So, um, but you could see other other you know opponents would come that have been in fine form, and sometimes they just freeze. You know, the 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 occasion could get hold of them, and, and the fans can really play a part. Sean, controversial moment in the match. Milner was on a yellow card. He received one yellow, and should he have received a second yellow? This is the first one we're seeing right now. But there's no arguments about this, are there? No, that was just a great first touch by Foden. James Milner knew exactly what he was doing there. And in, in some ways, it, it was a good yellow card to take because you don't know what could have happened on the other side. So I'd hands up for that one. But this is great play by Bernardo. But that, for me, is 100% definitely another yellow card. <laughs> That you can see yeah. he leaves his leg there on purpose, so he knows yeah. exactly what he's doing. And yeah, he doesn't try to get out of the way at all, does he? Knows. I think he probably forgot he was booked at that time because it's a very daft tackle. So, um, but yeah, but you know, he's sitting there smirking now because he knows he's got away with one. <laughs> he does know. You can see it's all over his face. And Pep, rightly so, was really annoyed by that. Yeah, he was so annoyed to the point where. Me and John, I was laughing about that. He didn't know what to do with himself, so he kind of just took off his jacket, <laughs> put it on the back of the yeah. chair, and just kind of just sat, sat down, down like and stood saying, up, sat down. Oh, I don't know what else to do. It just, yeah. it just feels like he feels like, and I think he said in his interview, if it was a City player, he would have been sent off. Mm. Yes, you know, obviously you don't want to see managers asking for players to be booked or sent off, but he's got a point. <laughs> you know, he's really frustrated and. You know, because, you know, <laughs> 10 men against City, you know, that's a, it's going to be a oh, tough 20 totally minutes. Different. Changes so the game, that will it? change the aspect of the game. Um, and, that they, you know, they probably would have gone on to win it. So you can, you can sense his frustration. And like I say, Milner's, uh, he's got a way of one. Well, aside from that, we are looking at two of the top teams in the Premier League that seem to be pushing each other to get better and better. And it's just brilliant to watch. Mm -hmm. Was that the game of the season for you so far, Sean? For me so far, it definitely was that. Uh, I think what was great about it is coming into the game before, obviously, this game, they had played 10 games, only two draws. So yeah. you kind of knew or was hoping that they would still continue with that with goals in the game. But we got a draw and it was exciting and to a point both teams could have won it in the end. Yeah. So for me, it, it's a fantastic advertisement for the Premier League. Who, who wouldn't want to see that or mm. be a part of it? It was exceptional, wasn't yeah. it? Actually, John Bond said that he thought that that was the best City had played this season. Did you feel the same? 
I think they played fantastic today, but I think against Chelsea on the, on the weekend before, I think they, they were unbelievable. They, they literally steamrolled them for 80 minutes. 80 minutes, sorry. And this is up there, but sorry, Barnsley, I have to say um, you're <laughs> wrong with that one. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You don't need to be sorry. OK, it's now time for a quick break, after which we will bring you the...